All right, hi, welcome to another episode. So I'm gonna work on the car now directly after the last video, which will probably be some time ago, but um, I've got a few days before I have to disappear to work. So let's get on with it. And I'm gonna talk you through what I'm gonna do and why I've gotta do it. Um, so I'm following off on the last video, I mentioned at the end, there's a few bits and pieces that need to be done. Um, I'm looking to get the IVA done this year. So really gotta sort of dig into them. Um, one of them is the windscreen's gotta come out where I've bonded in some sections of the edges. It's gotta come out so I can get the dashboard back out. Um, dashboard out for two reasons. One is because the windscreen wipers don't park, as you've just seen in the last video. And the second reason is the fuel gauge is not reading. It's uh, stuck around about two th uh, three quarters. And um, I've tested the sender in the boot and it's not the sender, it's the gauge. So I have to check the gauge when I get the dash out and you get to it from the back. And also there's a small, um, like a calibration unit which you can program to tell the gauge where to go on particular readings that may well be faulty again. So basically the dash has got to come out anyway, which is annoying because it's a real pain, but uh, it's what it takes. Um, other things to do, so the, the driver's door where I've got my like leather door opening strap, you can either push it or pull it to open the catches, that got yanked um, by a bit harder than it should have been when we're on the, the track table with someone who's not used to it. Um, but at the same time, you should be able to handle it. But there's a, a small metal ring which goes around the door mechanism and it's attached to the leather strap, which is what activates it. That stretched and opened up so the door handle came off of it. So I need to fix that. But um, yeah, that's no big deal. That's just me putting the right bits back together again. So what I'll do is I'll leave you there, give you a view, probably speed it up because this is going to be a pain in the ass, but I'll actually show you um, taking the windscreen out and laying it down. And then, yeah, probably some of the removal of the dash when I get to that today. So enjoy. Right, okay, so I'm just clearing some space. Well, I've taken the windscreen wipers off, put them on the side. I put these little um, suckers on there, blanket on there. So now I'm gonna go inside and cut through the bonding with um, a long fillet knife that I've got. It's the only seems to be the only thing that I can get to the bonding with, and then we'll see if we can get it out. I'll speed this up or cut it. I think it'll take a while. Right, so I've cut both sides. Now hopefully with these I can just lean, lay it on, lay it onto here. Okay. Right, I'll give you a close up of uh, how the fixings worked. Right, so you'll see on the windscreen from an angle, I did three pieces of bonding. So I just wanted to hold the windscreen in from falling out when I braked. And the same that side. Uh, so one side, I've actually got tabs of foam, which I've had around the screen for ages, which give it the right position once it's in place. Uh, so you can see the base of the, of the bonding. It's only supposed to be small dollops, just to keep it there. Obviously when it's done, it'll be seamed all the way around. I'll leave the foam in place because then it beds in the right spot, but I'll, uh, I might trim it down and then bond below it so that there's a full seal. Anyway, those are things to think about for another day. So what I'll probably do is I'll clear some space up on the side and I'll move the glass out of the way so that when I'm taking out the dashboard, which involves, oh, there we go, involves taking out the um, top of the roof lining. I don't know what you call this, but it's got the roof lining then I made these pieces and the A pillar covers. These all go over the edge of the, oh, it's a bit too black. These go off uh, over the edge of the dash. So these need to come off. There's screws in here. Uh, there's edging that needs to come off. And then there's just loads of bits and pieces that need to be taken out. I'm really not looking forward to it. So let's just get on with this and I'll put you back up on top. And no doubt this will be fast forwarded um, heavily. It's gonna be a long, boring to watch job. So 
I think I might give you a different view because from here, you can't really see much of what's going on. So I think I'll move you over to there and you can see kind of got to take all the center console to pieces. And I might even actually show you what went into making these um, A-pillar covers. So I think I'll do that now. Okay, so we're back inside the car. So you've just seen me take out this um, A-pillar console well, um, a dashboard cover and it goes the roof lining to the back there. So you'll see this is um, like um, a fake Alcantara, which is on top of a three millimeter thick uh, scrim foam. It's all glued to the roof. Um, so when I got the fiberglass body, there was no, there's nothing here. They just had empty spaces. So having never done it before, I didn't really know what I wanted to try and achieve. Well, I knew what I'd finished it needed to look like. It needed to look like the inside of a car. So I mixed up a load of epoxy, some thickening agent, um, microbeads, and I bonded in um, some wood that I knew was going to sit approximately flush um, to where I wanted the space to be filled. Um, the intention with that was that when I create something to go over, better, create something to go over here, um, it would have something to fix to. So screw into the uh, screw into the A pillar. So all I did then was I got a load of tape and I taped it around the pillar all the way across to create the shape that I thought and all the way up into here, along here, around the outside. So it looked a bit of a mess. There might be some history in um, some of the videos. I can't remember what I've showed you. Potential on the Instagram. But either way, so I taped the area that I was happy. When I, when I, then I was happy with actually how it looked. So I thought, well, if that tape became um, material, that would be what I wanted. So once I was happy with that one piece, I covered it with an epoxy resin and then put some very thin fiberglass sheet on it and created one huge section. It was all right around the car. So it was all in here, down that side and up the top there. I didn't do the back uh, at that point. Um, so I covered it all over and it's a thin sheet of fiberglass. And then when that went off, it was really thin because I couldn't put so much on because it was gonna hang down and bag and it just wouldn't work. So one sheet of, um, is a woven matting on there. And then what I did before I peeled it off is I used my vibrating cutting tool, like Multimaster, and chopped it in the lines you see here, where I was decided that um, these would be separate pieces so that I could take them out, they're manageable. They were really flexible and it was really quite difficult to peel the tape off without breaking anything. But I did, I did it. And then laid them out flat, kind of as you can see there, but a bit better. And then I laid a few more layers of fiberglass resin um, and bonded it to it. So until it became it's, you know, about as flexible as it is now, so it's a bit more rigid. Um, and then when I was happy with that, I offered it back up again. I drilled some holes and I put some screws in to make sure it kind of fitted. I had to trim it to where the edges needed to be. Um, and then I filled it with some filler in all the divots and because I didn't want to have the fabric um, stuck on it. And all you'd be able to feel would be fiberglass um, like matting through it. So they got filled, sanded, filled, sanded. So I was kind of happy with that. And then it was bare fiberglass in here for ages until I went and ahead and did the fabric. And again, I glued three millimeters of foam onto it. Oh, you see that in the back there, you can still see the remnants of the tape for the initial um, layup. So there's three mil foam on that. And then there's fabric um, glued over that as well. Um, anyway, enough of that. So I'm gonna take up, taking this side out. I need to take this side out, door edge. The centre console here needs to be done, uh, as in done, I mean taking these bits out, these side panels out the same, this side, this will lean forward. Uh, it's all wired in the back so it doesn't come out completely and do the old um, twist fittings that releases it from the dash. I need to then um, take all the console, um, sorry, the, like the steering column section out, the cover and the indicator stalks and the horn that comes out and then I can pull the dash out of it, get to the back of it, undo the clips, which has all the electronics, and then I'll pass it out forward. So I'll give you what kind of view I can. Um, yeah, it's really not easy, but hey, -oh, let's carry on.
I think you just saw then that the, the whole centre console came back at me then. Um, there's a main power switch here which does a, um, like a remote relay breaker up forward, up, up in the NGMA. So by having it off here it's as good as having the battery disconnected. Side pieces. To remove a Clico pin at the other side, which is easy. It's just a Clico pin plier, pin, squeeze, pull, just a pin. That brings out that piece. Okay. Now, in here is actually the heater. Um, the heated cable, which is the tightest part, which if I move it, there we go, it gives you more space. Okay, so that's about as far out as that needs to come. That's all of them off. That screwdriver is invaluable to slowly prise open the connectors because there's just not enough room. I don't want to put any wires and pull wires out the back of pins. So, what we should be able to do now is we should be able to pull the dashboard for forward from this, and then I'll have to flip it over and put it onto the da onto the bonnet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything that's there, move it away now, and put it on the floor in a rag you might not be able to see. Maybe you will. Okay, so that's all the bits moved, all stayed together, all the screws and bolts stay with the right things. Give you a quick glimpse on the floor. It's all laid out there. So, Let's see if you can see the dash come out. Maybe we can record the moment that I've messed this up and break something. Um, so, I hate doing this for the record. I'm sure that I've said that a few times in this video. So the principle is that the top of the dash here has kind of got sandwich plates, one, two, three, four, five of them that I've put together which sandwich the fiberglass of the body. So if you have a chance to take that rubber off the column, so you pull it forwards, and that removes the sandwiching. And that is the naked back of the car. Um, yeah, that actually made it look more simple than it, it is. Um, I think it's because so many times I've done it that I've changed the way I do it and made it. like the, It wasn't all plugged to begin with, I had to take wires off. So yeah, let's get you a bit closer and I'll talk you through some of the bits that are in here, um, if you're interested. Okay, welcome to the naked inside of the car. Okay, so here we have 
the Corsa B steering column, electronic power steering, the motor's here. This is the control box for it. It's wired in there. We have the uh, electronic ignition system, the MSD unit there. This is the easy steer controller, which takes a feed from the um, drive shafts back down the back of the car, and it tells the power steering how fast we're going, so how much assistance that brain needs to give. Um, we have got the little thing here, which tells the fog lights to go off when the headlights come off and not come on until they're flip cycled, which is an IVA thing. We have a small fuse box for the easy steer um, unit there. And there's a couple of other bits in there. So we've got the speed sensor in there. We've got the handbrake light uh, power steering and the um, other calibration unit for the easy steer, which is a switch here, which I haven't actually had to use. Um, obviously we've got the whole controls here. We've got the heater pipes and that is the control valve with a pull cable which goes to here. Um, that's the one thing I haven't easily been able to disconnect. So to take this whole panel away, you've got the choke and the heater. And um, yeah, they are through this aluminium plate and they are connected through the firewall, in that case for the uh, choke. So yeah, they're a right pain. Um, rest of it is the wiring limb comes in, you've got common ignition power there. You've got uh, the main fuse for the starter motors down here. Um, you've got a negative ooh, under there. Anyway, it's a bit of a mess in the sense that that's how how much kind of came in. And there was no terminations um, here. It was just all one wiring loom with big chunky switch, um, switches or connectors when I first got the wiring loom. So a lot of that's been redone. Wires have been um, shortened, lengthened, tidied up. So surprisingly, even though this looks disgusting and messy, this is actually a lot more tidy um, than it was. And it's all in one place and surprisingly not actually know what everything does and it's very easy to trace wires now um so yeah that's what you're looking at that is this is all the relays here so you can see from underneath there indicators and fog lights etc and this is the main um fuse panel so actually when the dash is in it's just underneath the dash and it mounts so you can get to it very easily and there's a cover that goes on it um that's the alarm unit and brain led for the immobilizer um, and yeah, that's that's basically that. So what we're going to do now is find the little box for the fuel, which um, we come out. I say for the fuel. Right. Okay. And then this is the back of the dash. So you've got the blowers connected up there into a Y piece at the end, and that goes to the fan unit back of the gauges and they all go into three neat connectors and then this little black box down here is the fuel gauge um, like calibration unit so I need to work out whether that is the, the main issue um, these two cables here um, are actually they connect to these it's the only two that are push connectors that didn't go into a box so yeah I'll have a go at that so Hopefully this video hasn't been too long so far, but that is disassembly of most things. And while I'm in here, I will be looking at the windscreen wiper motor and wiring as well. So I'll come back to you. Right, that's a bonnet up, so now I'm going to have a look on the inside and trace the wires. 
Right, so I'm on the wiper motor issue at the moment. So these are the wires that pass back into the um, into the cockpit, we call it, from the wiper motor. There's five cables there. You've got black, you've got red and green, blue and green, green and brown and green. So I know that the blue and green and the red and green are the fast and slow. I know that black is ground, I know that green is ignition life, and then now I know that the brown with a green line on is the park cable. Um, and I found what I've done with it, and that was terminate it here. Because my mindset when I wired this originally was, um, it was just wipers or a toggle switch, off, slow, Oh, sorry, off, slow, and then fast. So I just didn't have it in my head that um, I needed to have a park. I, I'd, I've never done this before, so I didn't know. So I've terminated that with a heat shrink um, connected just so that it doesn't touch anything. So now what I need to do is understand um, where I put that and what signal it needs and when so that the wipers will house when turned off. Um, good thing for me is that everything's still connected, so I can effectively turn the battery on if I needed to, um, and test the wipers. I'll put a bit of tape, tape around the spindle so I know which way it's pointing. So I'll just make sure there's no um, connectors that can possibly ground out while I've taken everything to pieces. And I'll have a bit of a Google and I'll work out how to wire um, the home part the park we say um so yeah i will there's no point filming that because i'm gonna be on my phone for a while trying to work out how to do it hopefully this shouldn't be too much of a um, a crazy fix and then we can test the fuel sender um potential fix again which is just these two um and it might be a lot of jobs that i thought would take a long time um done we can put it back together so yeah let me google and i'll come back to you right so update on the wiper situation so um, I've got myself an extension of the green and brown wire and I've put it into the connector there so I have um, the park signal wire, shall we say, to hand. Um, so I've turned the power on and turned the ignition on and then used the wipers and they turn. Turn them off and I touch this wire to the ignition live on the bottom of the switch and blow a fuse, fuse number one. Okay, so that wasn't the case. Replace the fuse, turn the wipers back on again, they run, turn them off, touch this to the slow speed for position one on the switch, and they housed. It's like, okay, cool. Held it there, turn them back on again, pop fuse, number two. Turn them off again, replace the fuse, turn them on, let them run, turn them off, touch this to the fast position and they house, they house faster, but so they house. Okay, fine. I haven't held this to the fast position and turn it on again, because I know it's gonna blow the fuse, it's the same thing. So I've replaced the fuses, now I'm just a bit confused. So what I need to do is have this wire attached to ignition, but only attached to ignition when the fuse is in the off position. So I'm racking my brains as to how I do that. So I'm just gonna take a minute um, and think about it. But what I'll probably do is I'll, um, I'll put some tape on there, show you, put the camera at them, I'll turn them on, turn them off, and then touch it so they house, so we can actually see that they do house when this wire is connected to fast or slow when they're off. Okay, so you have yourself a view of a wiper with some tape on. So if I turn the power on, ignition on, and the wipers on, that's slow, that's fast, that's off. Now if I touch the green and brown park cable or wire to either the fast or the slow, I'll go to the slow one. That's it, it takes it to the home position. Turn it back on again, both speeds, works. Now I'll touch it to the fast one. Can you get it there? So they house, they house even faster. So I need to work out how that happens. It might be a case of the switch is not suitable. 
it's just a standard three-way um, off, on, on two. So I need to think about it. Hey, um, so I'm going to add a little bit to this video now just about the switches because I think we've just gone from me in the car needing to work out how the windscreen wiper switch is going to function with the park uh, facility. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of classroom stuff because this is how my mind's understanding it. So what I'll do is I've, I've drawn on the board. If you can picture this, this is the current switch is in there and we have an off, on, on. So you, when you're in the off position and these are the three connections on the back. So in the off position, which is position one, which is the power that comes in, okay? That doesn't connect to two or three, that's by itself. So effectively it's off, no power's going anywhere. In the on one position, which is the first click up, position one, the positive, connects to position two, which for us is the slow speed wiper, and that's it. So you make that circuit so the, the wipers the motor receives a signal to go slow. If you flick it up again to the on two position, the positive connects to the fast, which is position three. So there's no signal to two anymore, just a signal to three, so the wipers now work in the fast position. So if you understand that, so that's switch one. Effectively, it's a toggle switch, which I'm sure you've seen with uh, on, uh, off, on, on two. So what I'll do now, so you don't have to watch my horrific drawing, is I'll wipe this out and I'll draw what I think I need, which I'm hopefully gonna get, which will fix this issue. Right, okay, so second round. You'll see here, I've drawn three extra lines, which denotes the, the switch I'm gonna get, which I, th I think is gonna work, so I'm gonna explain it here. Again, it's a, separate, it's, uh, it's a similar switch, uh, looks the same, which is what's important to me. It has an off position, an on, and a second on. So we're gonna say off, on one, and on two has eight connections on the back. You should be able to see this clearly here. It's quite confusing, but I've indicated which ones are connected in the different settings here. Um, one and seven are on all the time, which we won't need for this. I'll leave it there, but we're not gonna need this. So what I need to achieve is in the off position, I need the park motor, uh, the park wire, to connect with the slow or the fast wiper um, wire to the motor. So we'll, we'll go with slow. So, but I don't want the park wire to connect to any other time in the switch. So in my mind, that goes right. Number two. So if we use two, oh, pen's dying. If we use two as P for park, and then we need the slow wire, which I'm going to say is six, because that's on there. So in the off position, park is connected to the slow wiper wire, which will park the wiper. Nothing else is connected. On position one, which is when we want the wipers to come into a slow speed, we're going to use four as power. So we use a positive there. And then again, we, we just use slow as six. We use slow there, which means in this position, power is connected to the slow wire. The wipers will wipe. The park wire has no signal, so that won't blow the fuse again, as we did yesterday, twice, three times. Um, and then if we flick it up to the on three position, stick with me here, Again, there's no signal for the park wire. Which obviously, pin four is still positive. I'll have more of a star than a plus. Um, and we're going to go with eight as the fast wire. Oh, well, that's really bad. So all the way on, positive connects to the fast wire. So the wipers are working at maximum speed. Then when we flick to turn it off, we'll come down through the middle setting because the switch is linear, comes down, goes into slow, then goes into off. So there's no positive connection. It's just the park from the slow. So I'm pretty happy that when this switch arrives, when this switch arrives, it will work. Uh, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the switches in there, which are all stainless um, novels on them or chromed uh, throws on the toggle. This one's a plastic one, but I can't find this type of switch with anything else on it. So let's just roll with it. That's fine. If I need to, I can chrome it. Um, Okay, so I think I'll put this video out because I'm going to be going back to work before the switch, the switch, I can't say switch, before the switch arrives. Um, so that will be, in theory it'll be fine. So I'll fit it when I get back and you'll see that then. But what I will do before I go is hopefully test the fuel sender by checking if those cables were the issue. Um, yeah, because I can put the dash back in now 
and it's only the lower control section with all the switches on that needs to be messed with to change the um, this switch for this to this. And physically, I don't think the switch is much bigger. It's a bit wider, but it should work. So I hope that's clear as mud. This is the third part of the video, which I said I was gonna put out, and I think that was around about February, March time. I can't even remember now. Um, but I've come back from work and jumped straight into doing the things I said I was gonna do. Uh, ultimately, it's because I bought some parts and they arrived, and when I came home, I went, ooh, let's get this done. Um, not really thinking about where the footage was, and I actually forgot I didn't put the last video out. So what we are doing, what I've just done, um, I want to update you on now, was the, the fuel sender has been calibrated and is back in, the dashboard is back in, and I've attached a E-marked fog light on the rear and I'm jacked up, yeah. uh, ready to change the temperature sensor switch for the radiator. So uh, yeah, when I got back from work, um, I had ordered uh, tiny variable resistor, actually there's three in here. Um, crazy story was I bought two because I didn't want one to lose one or break one. And then when I did the job I needed to do, and I thought, oh, where would I put these that's safe? Um, I thought, all right, there's a corner of one of my electrical components box. That would be a great spot for it. Open the box, what was sitting in that fucking corner of the box was the one I had from new with the tiny baby screwdriver to adjust it. So yeah, kicked myself a little bit because I could have done this six months ago if I knew it was there. Uh, long story short, marked up here just the five positions with the empty uh, quarter, half, three quarters and full. Um, I've also added the low fuel level light to come on in that little brain. The uh, gauge match, I've been saying it wrong this whole video, little black box, it's called gauge matcher. Um, car solutions or whatever kit card solutions that you can buy those there um so that's now been done i haven't filled the tank but i've done it using the resistors and using the um yeah using that method programmed it and programmed the gauge so happy that it is where it is now when i put it on the ground it reads where it's supposed to and if i touch the cables uh, it reads full and if i put back onto resistor and wind the resistor up you can watch the gauge go up to where it would be full resistance uh for a full tank so happy with that moved on from there um, these are my, this is my list, I'm sure you'll be reading them over my shoulder anyway. So the wipe and park position, I've now done that. So the three, um, the three pole switch, which was with the eight fittings, uh, sorry, eight connections, as I've already talked through, so I won't go over again, that arrived, uh, had a 14 mil diameter threaded neck on it. All the switches in my panel were 12, so I actually had to drill out my panel slightly to get it in, which was a bit of a because I then can't go back to my original switches, which I have no reason to, but I don't really like the switch because it's got a black plastic throw on it as opposed to a chromed one, but it is what it is. So I'll show you that in a second. So yeah, that's done, that works absolutely fine. Happy with that one. So that's the wipers, the fuel gauge sender is done. So the door lock uh, and the door, the, the driver's door, I've got it down as, adjust the driver's door and the driver's door lock's the same thing for some reason. This is a new stainless steel clip. Uh, ring, sorry, which the leather strap goes onto and the door um, lock itself connects onto. So these are going nowhere, um, it's proper. So that's done, the panel's back on the door, rivets are on, enough to hold it in, so that's good. Uh, the radiator fan switch, uh, a new one's on its way. The car's jacked up, I'll show you shortly as to how I'm doing that. I've just told you in the earlier video that I would lift the front up to get as, as much water, well, prevent as much water coming out as possible when I change it over, or coolant. Oil temperature and pressure, so that was flicking on. Um, no oil pressure light used, was coming on and off when I was driving at Thruxton. I looked through it and I, in my mind it was a case of, oh, maybe the pressure switch I have isn't set to the pressure this engine needs because it's a arbitrary pressure switch. Um, but actually when I took off the spade connector, it was really loose. So I've got a feeling that that may well have just actually been breaking connection when the vibration of the engine, hence the flashing. So I'll leave that as is. I've, I've recrimped on a new one and it's on there nice and tight. We'll see if that happens. Um, oil temperature, uh, new battery. Yep, yeah, that's in. The old one is, is here. It's exactly the same, but this one um, is, well, I think 2018 when I got the car, it wasn't always on charge and it's had a bit of a, a shit life being in the workshop for four years. Um, e mark fog light, that's on. I'll show you in a second. And 
the marker make the um, plate that goes on the chassis for the IVA. I'm stamping that uh, yesterday. I just need to get the engine number. So that's a big update as to what I've done. And I think when this video goes out, finally, I've said it five times in this video, um, you'll have an update on pretty much everything that's there. There's a few other bits and pieces yet to do, but uh, yeah, that's what we're getting to. So I'll just turn the camera around and I'll show you the bits and pieces on the car.